Hey guys and welcome to the fish room. I'm Rachel O'Leary and it's time for a Tuesday tip. One of the things you guys have been asking me again and again is what the hell is an L number? So I thought today we would talk a little bit about that, what it means, what it means to us as hobbyists, and sort of the drawbacks of the entire system. So I think it's first important to mention that fish have been being classified via the Latin genus and species names since the 1700s, and that is really the most accepted way in order to know what fish we're having. It's one of the reasons I don't know common names very well, and part of the reason for that is depending on who has fish collected and who has them exported and where they're imported to, if we rely on common names, then basically whoever is selling the fish can call them whatever they want which can lead to a lot of confusion. So knowing that genus and species, that Latin name, is, is really important for a lot of reasons. Now what happened with plecos is that in the 2000s they started, you know, Central and South America started being explored a lot more and all these fish were being introduced into our hobby. But they hadn't been scientifically classified yet and the issues that we were running into were, was that uh, there was no commonality in understanding on what fish was what. So in the 80s, there was a German magazine called Dats. Now Dats was run by Arthur Werner and Rainer Stokowski. And what they did is they came up with a system of L numbers. And L stands for Loricaridae, and then they would assign them a number. And this way, people could look at the L number, figure out what fish they have, and everyone could be talking about the same fish. Now business being what it is and competition being what it is, there was another magazine that was also current um, who also imported and sold fish and they started the LDA numbers. Now LDA was for Loricaridae Dos Aquarium or you know Plecos in our aquariums and those are the LDA numbers. Now the two didn't coordinate with each other so often fish were assigned two different numbers. There's over 400 L numbers assigned right now and over 100 LDA numbers, often not aligning at all. One of the important things or confusing things or problematic things with the L number system is that there can be variation based on where a fish is collected as to how it looks. Uh, especially with plecos, there can be a huge variation depending on what part of the life cycle it's in. Often baby plecos look very, very different from their adult counterparts. So a lot of times L numbers were assigned, multiple L numbers were assigned to the same fish and nobody knew it. Now what's supposed to happen is as the fish gets um, scientifically studied and classified, that L number is supposed to be retired. What made things even more confusing is that Aqualog was trying to help. You know, all these classifications and L numbers were basically done in German, with, but fish were coming into the United States, fish were going all over the world, but the ability to be able to see what the L number was and the reference tools available just weren't there. So Aqualog produced a catalog of L numbers. Unfortunately, not all of them matched the L numbers that were assigned. So now we have three sets of numbers of the same fish, sometimes with multiple fish having the same number, sometimes with one fish having multiple numbers. Now what's supposed to happen, as I mentioned, is once a fish is scientifically classified, that L number is retired. Unfortunately, there's a lot of fish that need to be classified. Uh, now, scientists do sometimes rely pretty heavily on these L numbers in order to figure out what's what, but the reality is, is it's simply a naming system to give us an idea, to have a commonality, to be able to talk about the same fish without a whole bunch of common names causing confusion. All in all, it's a flawed system, but it's the best we got. And I hope that helps you understand a little bit more about what an L number is. As always, thank you for your continued support. I plan to focus this month on various uh, tips, tricks, and strategies for working with plecos, including high pan citrus and ancestrous plecos. So make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos. I'm going to show you how to feed them, how to set up a tank, and some more information on specific species. As always, let me know below if you guys have any comments, suggestions, or questions.